Hello, in this video we're going to generate data from a two-parameter Lindley distribution and also drive the maximum likelihood estimates for the two parameters. First, to generate data, the density is written like this and the two parameters, unknown parameters, are alpha and theta. We assume that the x and the theta are positive and that alpha times theta is, is greater than minus one. Now, to generate data, we kind of rewrite this. If you take that exponential in, you can think of it as two cases here. Now, this piece looks like an exponential distribution, and this piece looks like a, like a gamma distribution, uh, gamma of two and theta. Now, notice that this piece here is one minus this piece. So if, and this is less than or equal to one, right? Because alpha theta, alpha theta plus one. So it's between zero and one. So if we think of this as P, and this is an exponential distribution, this is one minus P, and then this is a gamma distribution with alpha two and beta theta, um, then that's how you generate data. So you, you randomly generate a number between zero and one. And if that number is between zero and P, determined by you know alpha and theta we generate from an exponential distribution if it's not we generate from a gamma distribution with two and theta and that's how you generate data from a two parameter Lindley distribution now the MLEs for this we're going to use Fisher scoring method and so uh, we'll, we'll do this in steps so first we need to find the likelihood or the joint distribution which is um, the product of these n times. So that's why we get to the nth to the nth. And uh, we're summing the exponents in the e. So this is the sum of the xi. And this is the product of the theta plus xi. Now we need the log likelihood of this function. So the log of this is you take, you know, the two can come out front of the log. And then since that's division, it's minus. And then that can come out front of the log, alpha. The uh, e and the natural log cancel. And we're just left with the exponent. And here, the, the log of a product is the sum of the logs, which is what this is. Now we stay, start taking partial derivatives. First, let's take it with respect to theta. So we get this. So the minus n comes out. That's a constant. And it's 1 over this. And then times the derivative of this with respect to alpha, which is theta. That's constant. Here it's, we get 1 over alpha plus xi. Now the second derivative, we take the second derivative of this, second derivative with respect to alpha. Um, this is a constant. So if you think about this as, you know, if you bring it up raised to the minus one power, the minus one cancels and it's minus two, and that's why and then you take it back down and you get this. The derivative with respect to alpha is theta, so that's why you get that extra squared. Same way here, it's just alpha plus xi to the minus uh, two. And notice the sign change. Now when we take them in regards to theta, here we get minus, or the two n, one over theta. Here, we get minus n, 1 over that, and then times the derivative with, res the, res with respect to theta, which is alpha. Here we just get the sum of the xi. This is constant, goes away. Now the second derivative with respect to this <coughs> is this. So we get minus 2n over theta plus n alpha squared over alpha theta plus 1 squared. Now the uh, partial with respect to theta then alpha is this. I'm not going to go over each step since I don't, we can't look at the previous page. But it's essentially this, so you can pause it and rewind if you need to, and it, and it boils down to this. Now the Fisher scoring is we need the Jacobian, or the observed Fisher information. So what we just derived, those go into this matrix. And then this is the score, the gradient. And this is it. This is the algorithm. So we take 
the score evaluated, you know, we have an initial value. We take it times the inverse of this Jacobian, evaluated at the initial value, plus you know, the initial value, and that gives us an updated value for alpha and theta. <coughs> then we take those values and plug them back into this, and it's just an iterative process until we get convergence. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.